You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike, and today we're taking a look at this ink from Taiwan. This is Linen Toolbar Atmospheric Twilight, and uh, man, I love this ink. This is an ink that I um, first used at, um, at, on day three of Inkvent, and I put it on some paper and was like, oh... Oh no, I have to have that. You have these nice like ink splotches on the, the label here, and those are pretty representative of what this ink looks like. You have a nice glass 30 mil bottle, a nice little splotch there. Just says 30 mils made in Taiwan, and I can't read the rest. So uh, I'm glad I wrote it on the box. But this ink is one that as soon as I put it on paper on uh, day three of Inkvent, I was like, must have this ink. I don't even care what it costs. Well, it costs 22 bucks for this 30 mil bottle, which is not the cheapest ink on the block, but it's not that bad. And man, this is a good ink. So let's take a look at it right here. It is this gorgeous gray. And uh, I think this is worth $22 a bottle, frankly. Uh, you can see the awesome shading you get in here. It is uh, a pigmented ink, so it's gonna have some waterproofness. Uh, and uh, it runs medium, maybe slightly wet in the pen that I have it in, which is this one right here that my friend John Albert made for me out of Argentium and Ultum, which is gorgeous. I've got a medium Yovo nib on here. And I think this pen has actually only had uh, atmospheric twilight in here. I have written down in my in my ink swatch book, as we'll see soon, that it was on uh, like the 4th of December I put this in there. So like the day after I, I tried this ink out, I was like, I must have. Um, and uh, comments. Man, do I like this ink. It is so good. Super duper good and definitely worth trying out. Uh, so let's uh, do a little bit of water test. We'll look at some swatches. We'll see it on some different papers. All that jazz. Get some other words, because why not? Let that shake and shimmy for just a sec. Okay, so uh, it looks like kind of nothing's happened, which is what I expected. Let's blot that up, blot, blot, blot. You can see through the paper towel. <laughs> But uh, almost nothing came up. Maybe a little bit of gray came off, but I can't really tell. It didn't really, did it even smudge? Didn't even really smudge here, which is pretty darn good. Uh, I don't know, maybe there's, it's hard to say. Almost nothing came off, if anything at all. So uh, yeah, waterproof? Yup, check. I am not surprised by that at all. What I am a little bit surprised by is the, uh, the chromatography here which is, uh, it actually moved more than I thought it should. So down here, you have this bit that uh, stuck around, but then it pushed a lot of the gray up the chromatography strip, which is interesting, because man, once this gets into paper, it just kind of sticks around, it doesn't doesn't move. Uh, but again, this was just put on there really, like it didn't dry, obviously. Uh, and maybe the drying makes it a fix? I don't really know, but uh, darn, that's good. All right, uh, so let's take a look at it on some different papers. Firstly, uh, this is my 20 pound Staples 30% recycled copy paper, and it does pretty darn well on here. You can see a couple of tiny little feathers, like maybe in that S on Staples. It's uh, about it. <laughs> and then on the back, you can see a few dots came through, but this is, of course, the worst paper around. And so uh, this is some of the best performance of anything on here. Pigmented inks are usually pretty darn good uh, at bad paper. Although, you know, not always perfect. Uh, then we've got it here in my currently inked. This is this one's full. This is uh, wheat straw paper. And there it is. It's this beautiful gray. Now, when you put this down, like this swatch that I made over here on the Rhodia paper or here, it doesn't look gray. It actually looks blue. And I'll put a picture of that here. And then here's the, here's the second picture of, uh, of it being gray. So really interesting ink. I like that color switch. You don't usually see that a lot with uh, pigmented inks. And then, here it is in my ink journal, uh, Tomoe River, currently inked book, and uh, it's right here. It's like a really beautiful steely gray. This is exactly the right kind of gray for me. Uh, it's got just a hint of a blue tinge to it. Uh, it is just, uh, just a good looking gray, and I really dig it. Then, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it uh, here on some, some like sort of ink swatch cards. 
So I've got this one, which is, um, uh, I want to say these are Subami, but it doesn't actually say anywhere. So now I've forgotten. Anyway, you got this one, which is a very nice Japanese paper right there. And you can see there's actually some shading, a little bit of like pooling and sheen sort of situation going on like right there. And that looks great. And then here is the Colodex card that I always use for these kinds of things right there. Uh, I don't actually have anything that is a very good match for this. This is a singular kind of gray in my experience. I've got here uh, Three Oysters Cool Gray, but Cool Gray is not as cool as Atmospheric Twilight. It's definitely a lot darker, I think. And uh, as I remember, Cool Gray doesn't work as well on the, the bad papers. Oh, very nice ink from, uh, from Three Oysters there. Then I've got here uh, Ockerman number 30. This is uh, Hetzvartapod which is uh, kind of close, I guess. But I tell you what, this atmospheric toolbar makes all these other inks look kind of pedestrian. Um, I'm just a, I'm a fan for, of this thing. I've got here Pelican uh, Edelstein Moonstone, which is a very nice gray, but again, it's not nearly the same color. This has more like of a brown yellow tone, and this one swings kind of blue. Uh, and I think I like the blue a little bit better, although this is also a very nice ink, just a different color tone. Then uh, Karandash Infinite Gray, which is another gray. And you can see that uh, Atmospheric Twilight definitely goes more blue, like way more blue. And then lastly, uh, this one's actually kind of close. This is Organic Studio Arsenic Gray, which actually was named for Audrey's old job doing science with arsenic. Uh, we knew Tyler and we we're like, hey, he's got this gray. And she's like, it looks kind of like arsenic. So there you go. It's a little bit, it's kind of close, um, but I, I love this color. And so, uh, I mean, this is also a good gray, but... This one right here, this is like this is my favorite gray I think right now. Uh, it didn't even it's it's better than the Mont Blanc ones I compared it to. It, there wasn't anything really in my Rolodex uh, that was comparing to this one very well at all. So uh, check out Linen Toolbar, uh, Atmospheric Twilight, and I guess the rest of the Atmospheric inks or the rest of the Linen Toolbar inks, heck for that matter, because this is actually the only one I've really used. But man, do I like it! Uh, so uh, go find it at Shigura Inks or wherever else you can find uh, Linen Toolbar. Tell them that I sent you. Like the video. Comment on the video. Subscribe. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see y'all uh, later on. Peace out.